perfect. So good evening, everyone. Um, hope you're all well. I'm going to be looking at um, the midwife's role in fetal monitoring this evening and ensuring that we understand the whole clinical picture as well um, in regards to fetal physiology. Um, so the few things that we're going to discuss this evening is looking at the current research, guidance and evidence-based practice, um, importance of the whole clinical, practice, uh, whole clinical picture when interpreting CCG traces, um, advocating for women during labour with fetal monitoring and the transition from the fetus to newborn, very brief at the, towards the end. So as part of our as part of our role as a midwife, the NMC competency demonstrates that we must look at women holistically through pregnancy. This includes the assessment during labour as well as looking at the whole clinical picture. Recent research and reports have demonstrated the importance of not just listening effectively to the fetal heart rate, but looking at the whole clinical picture. If we look at the Each Baby Counts reports over the years, um, this has found the importance of listening effectively, escalating an appropriate time frame, understanding the human factors within the maternity unit. However, Sadly, the statistics are showing the amount of babies that are severely brain injured, neonatal deaths or stillbirths has not changed much since 2015. The findings have shown that actually over 70% would have had a different outcome if different care was delivered. Um, and multitude of factors have impacted this. Ineffective CTG monitoring is a part of this and it's scary to understand that failure to act upon abnormal CTG is one of the highest causes. That's something that I'm going to later discuss. Mm. Uh, we've all heard of Saving Babies Lives Care Bundle version 2 and this is something that's in, had a huge impact within our maternity units within the UK and has had the massive support from NHS resolutions with CNST which we're all striving to be a part of. Um, effective fetal monitoring element 4 is what we are focusing on to currently um, ensure that all staff have current training that's up to date and implement an effective risk assessment and hourly fresh eyes. Um, again, we have the Ocogen report, which is shown a massive light on what can happen when effective uh, risk assessment is not followed. Um, this is something that we're key when focusing on interpreting CCG traces, that we have adequate timeframes. Um, HSHIP has also been a massive influential in the way we report writing within our risk in maternity, but also discussion with families, especially when something goes wrong or a bad outcome. Um, it also looks at the systematic approaches and systematic failures rather than a blame culture, which is something that's really, really had a massive impact, especially when interpreting CTGs. It's not someone's fault, but actually we're looking at what could we actually impact on our system. Now, all of these reports are fundamental and it's um, not only going to affect us as a midwife, but we want to provide the best care for our women. Now, we need to do this by ensuring that we're up to date with our knowledge and up to date with our training with our obstetricians and our midwives. Um, saving Babies Lives has obviously now um, focused on having a lead for this and obviously I'm one of these, a lead for fetal monitoring or lead for fetal wellbeing. Um, and this has helped to demonstrate that actually the obstetricians and the midwives both have support for our midwives who are interpreting CCGs, the doctors interpreting CCGs, if they're good outcomes, bad outcomes, it's good to have these discussions and make it a regular part of our day. Now, moving on to the main topic of this discussion um, is to look at the whole clinical picture. Over the years, there's it's been a massive system change in regards to fetal monitoring. We used to have, and there used to be a multitude of different guidelines, different words, different phrases, how we can interpret them. But it's really important actually that the focus is now going back onto the fetus and the mum. We're not just looking at a guideline at three o'clock in the morning and thinking, right, which box does this baby fit in? We're taking a step back and we're looking at mum and we're looking at baby and we're saying, okay, what's going on? What can we do? How can we actually, what is this fetus telling us in labour? And by just looking at a CCG trace, it can tell us a whole world of things, not just this is a fetal heart rate of 120 beats per minute. Now, the NHS loves an acronym, and especially in maternity, I know we do as well. So I've, I've broken this down into two, as you can see on either side of the screen, to mothers and the six Ps. Um, now, the six Ps is what I'm going to focus on just a little bit, because actually, when we're in caring, when we're in labour, <laughs> when we're caring for women in labour, especially, um, we do this subconsciously, but having it instilled in our practice and prompting us is something that we can look at when risk, risk assessing appropriately 
Now we'll start with problems. Now this mainly focus on the mothers that we're looking after. And this goes to the second acronym that we can see on the left hand side. Mothers can be broken down into meconium, oxytocin, temperature, hemorrhage, hyperstimulation, epidural environment, the rate of progress of labor, scar, sepsis and signs. Size. Now, these are all factors that we may or may not see in the woman that we're caring for, but these will all impact on our fetus and how the fetus is going to cope with the current stresses in labour. Moving on, we then have parity. We are evident and we know that actually the more babies you have, it can sometimes be quicker. But actually, if that fetus is not necessarily coping, it doesn't matter if you're a para four or a para naught. Actually, the fetus is telling us a story and telling us that we're not coping. So it's really important to not take into, take into consideration that we've got a primip or a multip, but actually how that was going to impact on this fetus. The next is power. Now, we know contractions are paramount for labour. It's how we have a baby. So but ensuring that we're reviewing these appropriately and that we're looking at the contractions. Are we having good resting tone? That resting tone allows our fetus to become re-oxygenated. And if we are having adequate resting tone, in between these, are these contractions, are they strong? Are we palpating? Are we feeling that these are coordinate? The next is the passenger, which is the most important part. The passenger is going to tell us if we're appropriate size when we're palpating with our fundal height measurements, but also when we're doing an appropriate VE. Through this VE, we're not just basing on she's five centimetres or 10 centimetres. We're looking at actually what's the position? Is there kappa? Is there moulding? What position is baby in? Are we thinking that she's going to take another seven hours, 12 hours, or actually is delivery imminent? Because this will all impact on what we're decision making for our CTG trace. Now, sorry. <laughs> Now, all of this will equal to the predicted time of delivery. And it's really important that knowing and understanding all of these risks are actually going to help us to focus on what our plan of action will be. The next slide is a lovely colourful slide, which I think is really helpful. And it's a good tool to use when we're looking at risk assessment and CCG interpretation. Now, I use this because it helps us to prompt no matter where you are in labour to think actually, okay, I've now taken hand over from a lady who's six centimetres who's come to the birth centre. Okay, or six centimetres come to labour, she's got meconium on board. I need to ask myself, right, have I reviewed fresh eyes? Have I done the six Ps? Is my baseline changed from antenatal? It gives you prompts, especially in the second stage as well, when we think about the importance of where the fetal heart is in relation to maternal heart rate as well it's very easy to pick up maternal heart rate in the second stage so it's that prompt okay do we need a fetal scalp electrode here are we thinking about where my fetus is in relation are we pushing for an hour and we're still not getting much descent what is happening the whole clinical picture <clears throat> just uh, here sorry advocating for women um so it's really really important that actually we are advocating for women regularly. We do it all the way through the pregnancy, antenatally, intrapartum and postnatally. And this is part of our code. This is part of it's renowned through us. But it's important that actually when we're caring for women in labour, that we're thinking about what is happening. So we ask, how is mum? How is baby? How is baby's movements? But if we feel that things are deteriorating or we feel like the trace is becoming abnormal, then we think to ourselves, how are we going to escalate this appropriately? We think about what team we're working alongside and that appropriate S-bar handover that we're having. Now, the S-bar handover that we're having with the doctors during ward round is fundamental to understand that we're using the correct terminology when escalating. Um, there's a really fantastic tool um, and video that I've seen um, called The Voice Inside. It's available. You can Google it from the University of Leicester Hospital. And it's a fantastic resource, actually, to demonstrate effective communication and um, it uses the scenario where a midwife holds up a CTG to her colleague and says this CTG is okay isn't it and her colleague goes yeah it's okay and you can see how actually the correct terminology wasn't used and actually we can bias unconsciously bias control each other and we think well this is okay well yeah it's okay when we think to ourselves Actually, if we had looked into this, this is an abnormal CCG trace, or this is actually, I'm worried about this CCG trace because of X, Y, and Z. You've clearly demonstrated this. 
and having that care plan discussion with the woman as well. Her plan and her care plan can change throughout labour. It can be on an hourly basis. And it's really important, actually, we're having that discussion with the woman. She could come into birth centre and want a lovely birth centre um, water birth. But actually, once you've risk assessed her and you think, actually, you're a meconium stain like now, I'm worried about the fetus, you will have continuous monitoring. Understanding and having that discussion with her about the importance of fetal monitoring and why we're worried or why we're making this care plan. She might have thought for the last nine months, this is her plan, this is what she wants to do. And how can we actually change and adapt that for her? And how can we support her in that? psychological safety I've put in this which is starting to become quite a big um, thing in reports at the moment and it's really important to actually um, start to understand especially working within a hospital unit and maternity unit it's a fantastic book I'm reading at the moment Amy Edmondson the fearless organization um, and it's, it's a fantastic book because I'm not quite finished yet so I don't know the ending but it's it's fantastic to look at what's happening in our workplace and understanding actually we're not going to work with the same team members every single day we're not going into it no one's going into an office at the moment but we're not going to an office seeing the same people day in day out and we know oh I know what she does I know what she does actually we're going into a workplace where you'll see different midwives you may see them once every couple of months different doctors every couple of weeks and who you might feel comfortable to escalate to is different to who you might feel that you're friends with or feel like you can escalate to them because they listen to you. Now, it's really important, actually, when we understand psychological safety, this would impact on the care that we give our women. So understand actually taking that step back and implementing this into training and thinking, actually, how can we break this down a bit further? So our midwives feel comfortable escalating, the doctors feel comfortable challenging the consultants or their colleagues. It's really important. Next slide. Now, this is just a very, very quick, because I don't want to go on too much about the neonate, but it leads you on to the next um, speaker, actually. Um, and understanding that the fetus will turn into a neonate. And it sounds very simple, but actually understanding that throughout the labour and what we're worried about, we're worried about this woman's preeclamptic and we're worried about, oh, her blood pressure or baby's got meconium or gestational diabetes. This will in turn and may affect the, fe the neonate once born, knowing that actually those concerns and worries that you had in labour don't necessarily disappear. And I think it's really, really fundamental to know when you understand the basic fetal physiology and the central nervous system, we understand that these fetus, this fetus may be redistributing and conserving its energy. It might have, you might be rushing for a category one emergency C-section and the baby is showing signs of metabolic acidosis on the core gases. But however, baby's had that first cry, everything's fine. Well, actually, it's just taking that review back and thinking, has this baby had any compromise that I might be worried about in the next couple of hours? Will this impact on my feeding? If I did a blood glucose now, will that be impacted? Because actually I've turned from an anaerobic to aerobic metabolism, etc. And it's just the importance to understand when we're worried about this fetus and when we're making plans for our hourly risk assessment, understanding that when this baby is born, do we want to make sure that this baby stays with mum? And that's the whole avoiding term admissions into neonatal unit and focusing on that baby. And that sums up my um, PowerPoint. Thank you very much for listening. I think we have questions at the end, um, but that's it. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching this video from the Maternity and Midwifery Forum. For more expert opinion and analysis, hit the button below to subscribe.